Well, I'm back out here in beautiful Glass Buttes, Oregon. And of course, this is where you collect all the obsidian. It's been three years since I was here last time. And um, man, it just is great to get back out here again and visit, see this remote, beautiful country. So today, I'm gonna collect some obsidian and I'm going to chip an arrow point out for you guys today. So let's get to collecting. The obsidian found here is of very good quality. There are various sized chunks, as well as flakes left from previous collectors. I prefer to collect small flakes like this one, as they're perfect for making deadly hunting points. With so much obsidian around, it really isn't necessary to go and pick up big chunks and knock flakes off of them. You can just walk around and pick up flakes like this that are lying all over the ground. So I've got a piece of smoky clear, it's got some bands in it, piece of obsidian that I'm going to chip into a point. Now one thing that's interesting about the Paiute people and other tribes that use this uh, obsidian source is even though there is a, is a supply of the mahogany variety, they really didn't utilize it that much. And mostly what the uh, old guys used was the black and the smoky clear obsidian. Um, for some reason, they didn't use the mahogany varieties very often. They did, but it tends to be more rare. So I'm going to follow suit with what the old guys did and turn this little black piece of obsidian into a point. Now this piece is a little bit thick. It's got a thick ridge in the center here. So I want to knock that off and thin this piece down first. So I'm going to work into this edge, taking off just short flakes. I want to steepen this edge up and create that beveled angled edge so I can then flip it over and knock a flake off of it that'll really thin this piece down. I'm grinding it heavily because I'm really going to hit it pretty hard and knock a flake off. I want that flake to travel and follow this ridge. Let's see what happens. Well, that flake dove, it actually did what um, will happen when you flew to point. It actually went, it, it went really well, but then it spread out and it actually dove down through the uh, piece of stone and took the, sheared the tip off. But that's okay. We'll just trim this down, keep thinning it, work it down. So with just a few flake removals here, I've thinned this piece down quite a bit. So the nice thing about this obsidian, it really works well. The flakes carry very nicely because it's uh, not as tough and as strong as flint. So when it comes to flaking, it really, really works well. You don't have to hit it as hard either, but you do have to make sure you've got your platforms and edges set up because it's so brittle, it is easy to break it. It's not as strong. Well, this stuff works nice. You just set your edges up and grind that edge well. You set your platforms right. And the flakes just really carry with a minimal amount of effort. So I've got this piece fairly thin and um, I'm going to switch to pressure. There's not really any need to keep doing percussion work on this. So now we're going to pressure flake this thing into shape. Well, once you gain experience with flint napping, you can crunch out a usable point in 10 or 15 minutes. That's all it takes. This easily worked obsidian, of course, makes your workload a lot easier. But even with flint, you can make points with surprising speed and rapidity. And I'm sure that's probably what the old guys did. They just crunch these things out, make five or six points in an hour, and they'd have enough to arm several arrows. I'm 
good heavy edge grinding for our next series of flakes and I'm still rubbing that edge to make sure it's dulled sufficiently Here I'm thickening the basal edge in preparation for several thinning flakes. Getting the base as thin as possible minimizes the amount of material that needs removal when creating the notches. This helps prevent breaking the base off as well as snapping off barbs and ears. Edge setup is crucial and even with experience you sometimes still have failures. A lot of practice is needed here, especially when notching. So I've got this uh, piece preformed out and it's looking really good, but I need to switch to a sharper, finer flaker as, as you move down and you get these points reduced. You don't want to keep using a big dull flaker like this because you end up exerting too much pressure on the point and can very easily break it. So now I'm just going to switch to a finer flaker, refine my edges a little more and work on the notching. Using this finer flaker is really where you start to be able to refine the point. Sharpen those edges. Still have to be fairly careful though. So the point's looking really good. It's starting to take shape and I've sent several flakes uh, up the, from the base up towards the tip to thin that base down. I'm going to start notching it now. Probably going to make a stemmed type of a point which is very commonly used out here by the Paiutes for their arrows and um, I need that base thin because I don't want to build up too much pressure and snap the base or break those barbs off so now we're going to uh, take a thin piece of antler and try to notch this thing. I'm trying to do this all with bone and antler tools as well so Really got to set up my edges correctly. You just don't have any room for air when you're in these notches. Each time I take a flake off, I'm widening that notch, crunching it out, giving myself some room so I can see what I'm doing here and I don't break the barbs off. That's about as good as I think I'm going to get. I don't want to get in there too much deeper, but I've got those, those notches placed and I've got that stem created. So now we're just going to bring in the point, refine the edges and sharpen it up. This technique of notching the point earlier in the process, then bringing the edges in and sharpening the barbs and tip was used in prehistoric times. This technique of notching the points early leaves more mass and strength and makes it easier to create fine notches with much less breakage and failures. It still requires a lot of practice, however. So there's the finished point. Got nice, super sharp edges. Be more than capable of taking down a mule deer or an elk. And that is, of course, what the Paiutes were hunting out here with points exactly like this. It's a lot of fun to come out here to an area like this to glass buttes and make a point just using the same tools that the Paiute Indians once used. So, thanks a bunch for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed.